this evening. I'm really excited to have a discussion, a, a discussion with our guests. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, writer and director Gloria, Gloria Uyong Kim and Eponine Lee, uh, who plays Mona in the film. So I'd like to welcome them in. And just uh, for folks, if you're watching on the Cines on Cinesen and uh, you want to ask our guests questions, um, go ahead and send, uh, send it in to us in the Cinesen chat. And uh, we have our moderators who will be uh, sending questions and we'll hopefully be able to get to, to your questions. All right, all right. So we have uh, we have Gloria Kim and Eponine Lee here with us, and uh, you know it's really it's really great for us at Real Asian uh, to see somebody's work develop over the years, and and also for them to keep continuing to put out stories. Um, you know we recognize how hard it is, and um, to you know just keep going and, and putting out work, and you know and Gloria, your you know your body of work has really focused so much on on gender and identity. Mm -hmm. um, and here with this film, uh, Queen of the Morning Calm, uh, we so much, see so much like a amplification, intensification of the stories that you've told in the past. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, really we've had uh, Gloria's films for a number of years. Um, and so this story tells, tells, is a story about Deborah, a young mother, working class yeah. Korean Canadian sex worker, uh, mm -hmm. living in a very precarious situation and in an in abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. then of course her daughter, Mona, uh, is a pro precocious, uh, precocious disturber. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was totally. gonna say, uh, you know, and, <laughs> yep. and it all come, but it all comes really uh, together beautifully in this film. So, Thank which, you. which I know this film has been in the works for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think you know, uh, let's start off a little bit. Um, where did this this journey begin for you, Gloria? Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time I wrote like a scrap of uh, like a script was uh, probably I, I, I'm pretty sure it was 2007. Like that's all the date that I see on the, the one of the first ones that I wrote. And uh, I had these characters come to me, Deborah and Mona, the mother and the daughter. Um, and when I first was writing it, Deborah wasn't a sex worker, um, but these two characters, and Ian, the third character, the older gentleman, they came to me and they, and they insisted on being heard. They insisted that their story be told. And so I wrote it down and it was this kind of contentious relationship between this mother and this daughter. And um, just, uh, she was looking for a place to stay. She was looking for a new place to stay. She was going to see this man, Ian. And uh, she um, was basically trying to seduce him into allowing her to stay with her daughter for as little money as possible. <laughs> and the daughter was wit witnessing this and, and basically like, you know, kind of embarrassed, kind of ashamed, sort of horrified, like seeing the display of her mother's sexuality. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, and she was like, you know, nine or 10 and just, just going, what is going on? And I, I just remember the, what is going on, Gloria? But somehow I have to write this story. Like just these characters are so insistent, you know, because this is the funny thing about script writing. Like these stories come to you and you just have to write them. And you're just like, what am I doing? I don't know. Like you're just pulling something out of nothing. And when you're particularly writing, like uh, the way, you know, I have written like my stories like you're not even really thinking about like how am I going to market this how am I going to make money off of this you're just thinking I just need to do this I just need to write this um and so you know that impetus can sometimes be uh like so it, you know there's such a combination of feelings of like being you know, free to do whatever you want. And the other part of it is like embarrassment because you're like, where is this coming from? <laughs> Who am I that I'm writing these insane stories, right? So that was where it and, started. And and this started as a short for a long time. Mm -hmm. So at what point were you like, oh, maybe this should be expanded into it? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I did the CFC uh, 
uh, director's lab and you, uh, they they like you to bring your stuff and they like to workshop stuff and I and at the time that was the one story I mean I had another story that I'm actually working on now currently um, th but that was one of the stories that I thought well it's a short I have like 10 pages I might as well just present it and I remember um, the uh, the editor in residence there who was my mentor Marlo Miazga who was really I just really connected with um she was just like well Goya this is not a short this is a feature and you have to write it like you just have to do it you know and I was like oh god I don't want to like write a feature it's writing can be so painful like I just want to make this into a short and just be done with it and move on but that just wasn't um like it stuck with me what she said and I thought oh you know it's true there is something more here and um I had uh just given birth to my daughter this was in um 2010 and I'd given birth to my daughter and I uh had gotten a script writing grant to do another story to do the banquet with which is a like a different story, but like also a mother daughter story because I'm kind of obsessed with that relationship. <laughs> and um, I, I was writing it, but you know, it, it just wasn't coming to me. And the other story, uh, these two characters, Deborah and Mona kept coming to me and, and they just kept interfering. I'd be trying to write the banquet, but then Deborah and Mona would just like jump in. And, and so I'd be like, oh gosh, I guess I should just, keep I don't know like at a certain point I was like I'm just gonna dive into this other story and just see what happens and I just remember uh just I don't know in like a sh very short period like just kind of barfing out a draft and just being like wow I don't even know where that came from mm -hmm. yeah and I mean it's it's really good to hear I think um how long these journeys can take you know it's mm -hmm. a really important for people to to know like the, mm -hmm. all the things that you put into it. And I'm sure over that time, you, um, these characters were speaking you, to you so much. Um, and I'm sure you also were thinking at the time, like, oh, who are, who's gonna play these people, right? And so- um, I had no idea, about, yeah. Right? <laughs> like, time. so, yeah. especially over maybe a 10 year period, right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, there are a lot of actors that we come that we see through uh, the industry, um, mm. sometimes you know another in, uh, you know job within the industry is very hard to stay within. Mm -hmm. um, it can be very challenging. People come in and out. So uh, maybe let, can we talk a little bit about the casting? How you found Eponine um, mm -hmm. and also Tina as well? So yeah, yeah. So well, with Eponine, I mean, I had uh, we had done a casting call and we had seen a lot of girls a lot of really adorable girls um like really adorable <laughs> girls and I had even done a call in like the Korean community I put out a few ads in the Korean paper and you know just on some Korean websites just to see what I would get and saw a few people come in and um you know but nobody really was quite right for it you know and I, a lot of the trained actors um, who are that age, there is a certain type of um, thing that they book work for. And it's mostly comedy and it's mostly, um, you know, a certain style of acting and it's incredibly endearing and it's really funny and it's really fast paced and, and there's like really no kind of stillness. And the, what I had needed for the Mona character um, was that she could access this stillness inside herself, that she could, um, you know, like I needed to know that this person was not a child actor. I needed to know they were an actor, <laughs> that they were, that they were really feeling these emotions and go going through these, you know, journeys, these internal journeys, because I think, um, you know, like there's a lot that can be said without dialogue, you know, like I think in a few of my pieces, there's, you know, there's a lot that I have done with, with very little dialogue and I needed like a real actor. And so I couldn't, I just couldn't, it was really hard to find that, mm -hmm. that actor. So I, I was like, I, I just have to keep 
looking and pushing and I, I remembered, you know, so, you know, I know Inns Choi, who is the genius behind Kim's Convenience. And, you know, he and I are not like super tight or anything like that, but like, you know, I think there's a mutual respect and um, he's got a deep history in, um, uh, in the theater world in Toronto. And I thought, I'll just ask him because I just feel like he would know people, you know, like, because I have tried you know, to turn over all these stones and haven't really found anyone. And um, he, I, he emailed me back and he said, well, you know, my friend Richard Lee has this, he was an actor, has this, you know, daughter who might be right. But, you know, the thing is that, you know, like, I don't know with this material. And I said, well, you know, at least give me his contact information. I can just reach out. And I reached out and I sent him the script and I just told him my story. And I said, this is what I'm looking for. I don't know whether this is right for your, your daughter, but I just thought I would ask. And um, it, anyways, Eponine, do you want to tell this part of the story? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I remember my dad kind of coming to me and saying, hey, Epps, you know, are you ready to audition? I've got like this you know, a little side for you if you are ready for it. However, you know, um, the content may be a little more mature for you. And I was like, I think I want to do it. I think I want to do it. Um, I was determined to. And we spent, I think, four days preparing for the audition um, with these two sides, like, um, which were both very challenging, but also really like a really great opportunity for me to, I guess, expand myself artistically and, kind of just become a better actor. So um, yeah, we worked on the um, audition stuff for like four days and I was so nervous coming to Antigoria's house um, <laughs> where the auditions were being held. And I just remember being you know, like, oh my gosh, this is happening, this is happening. But of course, like um, my dad and I were work on, worked on it and I just had to remember to be in the moment and to get after what I want. Those are the two most important things um, that I wanted to do in that audition. And um, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, Eponine, had, had you been working in, um, in film at all before? Or were you, did, what kind of experience did you have coming into this? Um, no, I have never done film before, but I, knew, I know my parents have worked a little bit. At least my dad had worked a little bit in film. Um, but no, I'm more of a theater kid. I'm more working like mm. the theater and the, um, and then like, that's that kind of things. So no, I was completely new to this experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she was really present and she like really did go after it, you know, like she really, I, and I was amazed, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I life. think it I think it bears out in the film too, and, and you know it's it's uh, really interesting that you brought up um, you know this kind of uh, mother daughter relationship, Gloria, mm -hmm. and, and how um, you know that's something that you're kind of constantly going back to. And you know yeah. it's interesting what you're saying about um, when in the original short that um, uh, it sounded like the that short was told from Mona's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and maybe that's something that you wrote quite a while ago. It sounds like mm -hmm. even before you you um, you were a mother. Um, and then yeah. and then and then this film is actually kind of like it's it's told from Mona and Deborah's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. and they, and it's this kind of like really fraught relationship between the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, um, I I don't know. I'm I'm curious, like how did did that perspective change over over time of who you're telling this story through? Yeah, like it was interesting because I found Deborah such a hard character to know. Um, you know, I, like I found, I, I totally knew who Mona was. I totally related to Mona. I, you know, Mona was like the tough little girl that I wished I was. <laughs> <laughs> smashing things, right? Yeah, smashing things and like stealing cigarettes. <laughs> And um, <laughs> so I really understood Mona and um, felt her journey tremendously. Um, but Deborah, I was like, I, I had no clue who Deborah was. It was so hard to kind of get into that character, you know, because I guess part of it was that she was the mother character and she's the hard ass Asian mom, right? <laughs> and 
you know, like it's such a, uh, like it's such a thing, right? Like, you know, I mean, not your mother, Epps, because <laughs> Nina, her mom is Nina Lee Aquino and she's fabulous. <laughs> like she's a, you know, goddess as far as I'm concerned. But um, like, y- you know, there's, th- there's a thing. It's like really tough Asian moms and, and it's like a relationship that's fraught with quite a lot of tension, you know, and, and I think it's, it's hard for a lot of us to, um, you know, because of, of that cultural thing, you know, this whole pride and the whole um, that separation, you know, there's there is no separation between an Asian parent and their child, but but there is completely a separation, if you know what I mean, right? Um, and so, like, getting to know who she was was so difficult for me. Um, and I it's think- interesting that you say that, yeah, yeah, because I, 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 I feel like, um, you know, watching the film uh i mean i'm a parent too and and just kind of like you know when when you see some films about parenting uh you can tell who is a parent who isn't sometimes you know like it's <laughs> like you know like what really got me is the whistle scene it's just like i just it, it's it, it's just like <laughs> you know what yes. i mean like as a parent it's yeah. so funny so yeah um, and so I think really honest, right? <laughs> totally honest, right? And it and it comes at the low point, and it's just mm-hmm. the cherry on top of Deborah's low point, right? <laughs> like this whistle, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just really interesting to hear that that yeah. it was so that it was difficult for you to access. Yeah, Deborah. yeah, it was so tough for such a long time, and then I became a mother and started to raise my child, and I had no plans ever, ever ever on any planet to ever be a mom right like it was never gonna happen it was just like I was adamant that that was not something I was ever gonna do and then I did become a mom and something in that transformation of just personally myself um just something happened for me where I suddenly was in my mother's shoes and could feel who she was and could feel the tremendous love that she had for me as a, as a baby, like it was just something, it was like a knowledge that downloaded in me that I suddenly understood. And then just stumbling around and writing that relationship. And it's, it was funny because you're just like, it's so clearly a mother daughter story, but like for a really long time, you're like, what is this story? (laughs) Because there's also (laughs) this, all this stuff around the abusive relationship and, you know, and um, it, it was definitely this eye-opening thing where I, it was like finding my way to understanding the love that a, like a hard-ass Asian mom has for their kid, right? Like mm-hmm. that it's, it's not, it's, it's not easy. It's not clean. It's not, um, you know, it's not, it's not always present, (laughs) you know, like, and I mean, what I mean by present is like, um, like, you know, how we are as parents, I think we are, are just everything is about trying to be present for our kids, right. Um, And be aware of who they are and, and attuned to their needs and like, see who they are as human beings. And that's not how, you know, it is in our culture, or even I think just intergenerationally in a lot of cultures, right? Um, And not just Asian, I think, I believe, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And so uh, just kind of seeing that, but seeing that there's also this tremendous love and that part of that, essentially, Deborah's journey is really about how do I fix my focus from just survival and this damaged relationship cycle that I'm in to seeing my my kid and making a like choice a choice for my kid yeah and I think it's also really um uh it's also about Mona seeing seeing her mm-hmm. mother as well right like mm-hmm. I mean it, it's interesting how you you were able to see Deborah finally in a way that like because Mona does as well it's a, and it's this really powerful thing where you know, mm. Deborah can leave because Mona gives her permission. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just really, really like, uh, um, yeah, it's it just really moving at that part. So, so when, when Eponine and Gloria, like when you're working together 
um, going through the character arcs and, and the story. So what were some of the conversations that you had about these, these, these themes and, and how to approach it, how to approach your character? Or was it just very narrow? Okay, like these things, we're gonna do these things in this scene, you know? Hmm. Steps. I, you know, honestly, it's such a long time. I just remember having these intense conversations and like, I remember there was, uh, we had a photographer on set a couple of days and there, they took a few pictures of these really intense conversations that, that Epps and I would have. And I'd be like, wow, <laughs> like I was so zeroed in on her and she was so zeroed in on me. I do remember that. I'm just trying to remember like the content of the conversations. I mean, I guess we really focused a lot on um, where um, the character it was emotionally in the scene because I do think that that's that's I mean I think you can have conversations beforehand but I think when you're on set you have to be in the moment like you can't it can't be too much I mean this is how I think like you can't talk over talk it like you just have to give like a little path to an actor and then let them do their thing you know, so that's, that's how I remember it. And I don't know if that's what you remember. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, Eponine was so prepared. Like she had like this whole notebook of like, you know, every single scene and like, just, you know, where am I here? Like, where was I the scene before? You know, what do I want? Who is this person to me? You know, like, uh, how am I going to get it? You know, she did her verbs, you know, her active <laughs> verbs. I was like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, so what were some of the, 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 the things that you were, uh, the tools that you were using to, to kind of get you through these scenes? I don't know, Gloria, I mentioned some of them right now, but what mm -hmm. were some of the really helpful things that helped you get through? Uh, for, for me, it was basically the three main things that I always have to remember in scene is what do I want? Like, what am I trying to go after? Um, my relationships with the people in the scenes, with the characters, like, is Deborah my mom? Like, or is Deborah some auntie that I'm really close to or something like that? And then the last one is that the camera loves me. That means, like, you know, it's it wants to see me and it wants to catch, my, uh, like, everything that I'm doing. So, you know, I shouldn't be afraid. I should just open up and you know and just remember that the camera loves me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she was such a fast learner you know because like we would you know the ac would give her her marks you know put the tape on the ground and and then you know like s some people who don't have that training on set they don't they don't know how to hit their marks but literally like you showed her once and then she was always on her mark and like <laughs> You know, I would say, Eponine, I need you to open up to camera. And uh, at first, she like, at first, I think the first time she didn't get it. And I, I realized, oh, wait, she doesn't know what that means. <laughs> so I'd say, Eponine, turn this shoulder this way uh, so that I can see you because I want to catch your beautiful face. <laughs> and then and then she just always knew to do that. Like anytime the camera was there. You know, and I think that's the mark of a really good, I, I know that sounds silly, but it really truly is the mark of a good actor. It, like if you know how to open up to camera, like if the camera doesn't see you, unless you're doing something and you're choosing to turn away from camera, which is then an artistic choice, you know? And I think that is a very wonderful way of working as well. But like, if you want to see the actor, <laughs> like opening up to camera is so important, right? So. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, Gloria, that, you know, this film does deal with a lot of thematic things that you have yeah. dealt with in the past. So, um, but I think that, um, you, you know, it, the film, you know, explicitly or implicitly shows domestic and sexual abuse. Um, yeah. um, so, so how do you do your role in depicting those forms? You know, I mean, I think, um, especially as a as a woman director, writer director, uh, Asian Canadian woman director, um, you know, how are you approaching these these themes in a way that that I, I you know, cinema does not have a good history of showing these things a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. right? 
yeah. so not that not that it's you know uh, fair to always have that burden but mm -hmm. we, you know it is it is the burden that I think you probably felt right mm -hmm. sure like I mean I certainly when I was um making the story and sending out uh it out into the world like you know I, I felt a real responsibility. I did think to myself, do I really want to make her into a sex worker? You know, that whole um, terrible Asian stereotype of the Asian sex worker. Um, and I just thought, you know, I really do think I need to do this for uh, several reasons, a number of reasons. And one was that um, I needed to tell a story about a woman who um, is in that role and um, is not judged, right? That the film doesn't judge her, that she doesn't judge herself, that um, the, the people around her don't really judge her. You know what I mean? That it is, um, and that she is the author of the story, that she is the main character and that she is the protagonist. And we are in her world and her mind and in her thought process um, so that we are not left with a story in which we are in some colonialized, you know, Asian country where some colonizer has come in and used up the country and then used up the women and then thrown them away, you know, because that story has been told. And I don't think we need to tell that story anymore. I mean, I don't need to tell that story. Mm -hmm. um, and the story of the woman whose body is the, you know, whose racialized body is the basically the seat of war. So to, so to speak, is the story that hasn't been told right and you know like i thought it, it's important because you know as an immigrant and as a you know an asian woman and as a woman of color i just thought i really want to be able to um like reframe that story and 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 claim that narrative back and make it a narrative of um this person is the hero the heroine the protagonist that this person is uh deserves to have their story told i think you know with my history of violence um and just being a survivor of um, violence and uh, a survivor of assault i um met a lot of women who felt really ashamed um i felt a lot of shame um and who felt like they couldn't tell their story and didn't want to tell their story and couldn't even name what had happened to them. And part of the impetus of my wanting to tell this story was to um, basically give voice to these women and let them know that they aren't alone and that their story is worthy of being told that because there's something about, there's a power in being able to put something on screen and do justice to it and show it to an audience where suddenly you are no longer a victim, you know, suddenly you are um, like, it, it's just a way of changing how we view um, survivors and how we view women and how we view sex workers. And it was just really important for me that um, we not um, that I did not, put something out there in which I was like, oh, poor Deborah, oh, poor this character, oh, poor sex worker, Asian woman, poor, you know what I mean? Woman who's living in poverty. It was, it was because it's a story of dignity. She, you know, like, and it's a story of a woman making choices, you know? Um, and I feel that, you know, you're with her in every single choice and she may not have made some good choices, but you're with her, you know? And, and you're, to me, it was like, that's, that's, is like, that's me. That's, you know, my sister, that's, you know, my, like, that's every woman, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's every woman. So that was 
why I made those choices and mm -hmm. why I thought it was important to make those choices and to, to kind of tackle the stereotypes and the tropes head on and um, really humanize this person because, um, she, you know, it, that's just how I felt about her and her mm -hmm. journey. So yeah. thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. I mean, I, re I really like what you say, what you said about that Deborah is the author you know, of, of her story, you know, like this mm -hmm. film is so much about, you know, begins with her telling Mona a fairy tale, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of like, and then, and it ends with, you know, a conclusion of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, or, 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 an op or an opening for a sequel. Um, but it's really <laughs> so much about like, you know, kind of the narratives that we give our lives, right? And, mm -hmm. and how we, how we have to try to rewrite that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when there are, um, times where we need to change, you know? Mm -hmm. We um, we do have people uh, who are watching and who have uh, 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 sent in some questions. So I wanted to go to that. Um, so our first question is for Eponine. Um, it says, Eponine, your portrayal of Mona was amazing. Um, Thank you. Uh, it, uh, let's see, you had to convey turbulent emotions of a child facing great instability. How did you manage to get into the character of Mona? especially in the more emotionally complicated moments? Oh, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm very different from Mona and I don't know. I guess I really had to understand her, po her point of view and her perspective on life and her mom and just, you know, how she's doing right now in, in, that, in that moment or in that scene. And I think I had to really like, project that somehow like either with my emotions or with my face I had to really but I, yeah, I had to really like understand where she's coming from and what situation she's in um to was, kind of, was there yeah. a scene that you had it was just like oh I'm really maybe um challenged uh, especially by this by this scene um I think for sure, like the the antique smashing scene was was quite hard, like very um, emotionally demanding for me, because um, yeah, I had to really get into that zone where I'm just go crazy and just smash everything, um, but of course with a reason, um, and that that at first was really challenging. That was actually one of the audition slides that I got, um, oh. <laughs> so I had to, I had worked about like worked um, on that scene a little bit before. But I really had to like think deep down, like why is she smashing things, and you know, like why is she doing these things, and what is she feeling deep down? Um, so yeah, that scene in particular was really challenging, but also I think really good for me as an actor to experience and do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah when you were mentioning the sides, I was curious about what, what yeah. the scenes were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so we have another question. Um, this is for Gloria. So were the characters written with race in mind? Yeah, they were. Uh, she was Korean from the start. Mm -hmm. I, I was really interested in looking at, um, you know, that dynamic between a Korean mother and child. So mm -hmm. I always... And, and were the were the um, Sarge and Ian always meant to be white male characters that like they have this kind of like yeah like I I didn't really for Sarge and Ian you know I looked at different actors and I looked at different races and for a while I I really wanted to um, cast an Indigenous actor for Ian um, I I did think that for Sarge and this was just something that I, I was sensitive to. I thought I, I didn't want to cast a BIPOC actor. Um, I just didn't want to, we're still in that slightly delicate place where I just didn't want to portray a BIPOC actor, male actor as abusive. Um, I just felt, you know, I just really wanted to be sensitive to that. Um, but, uh, you know, in the desperate <laughs> pull of casting, um, it was, uh, which was, we had like two weeks, two or three weeks to cast. It was, it was wow. pretty intense. Yeah. And fast mm -hmm. process. Yeah. Wow. So that was, yes. 
Okay, we got some questions flying in, so let's try to get these. Um, um, uh, third question is: There was a land of the morning calm brochure on the fridge uh, in the beginning oh, of the film. Oh, somebody that! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, so somebody was asking: um, How yeah. was this the title? How was the title of the film chosen? How how was the title ch oh, chosen? Yeah, so I I had uh, I just I don't know why I came up with the title Queen of the Morning Calm. At the time, it was just something that I came up with, but it was it definitely a nod to the Korean roots of the character, and obviously my Korean roots. And um, the uh, I just thought for me it was important that I cast these women as like queens, really, right? Like I thought it didn't matter that they were. Um, you know, on the low, lowest rung of society. <laughs> I just, for me, it was who they were inside. So mm -hmm. that's why I called it Queen of the Morning Calm. That made mm -hmm. sense. Um, we have another question. So, um, and you mentioned this a little bit uh, in terms of like the uh, sensitivity that you had towards writing a character who was a sex worker. So, but somebody is asking, what kind of research did you do to write about this character uh, as a sex worker? Uh, yeah, so I just, I talked to a few sex workers, um, you know, asked them questions. I had, I had some friends who became sex workers as well. But, and I just, so I, to me, it was like, oh, this is something that happens so easily, right? It wasn't like out of, the norm that this would happen like it was it was just something that you could kind of slip into um and that it could escalate into sex work right that you could just be like well I'll just start with dancing or I'll just dance you know and then and then it, be, it becomes something you know more because you make you know so much more money and um and everyone's doing it and then um I you know sometimes I would send scenes like I sent a few scenes to a couple of sex workers asking them just about authenticity um because definitely in, in trying to find deborah in this like world it was it was challenging i'm not gonna lie like i i found that really hard to kind of get into and it was also just a lot of like you know writing about it in a in a more traumatized way like like that she would be traumatized by it but you know doing that kind of research really helped me realize oh that's not how they perceive it they're not traumatized by it they're if there was trauma that would have been in the past for them and that this is work for them right and so just kind of casting it and more in that light in the writing um that was really really helpful um and their feedback was really really helpful for that kind of thing so yeah that's how i did it <laughs> And um, just another question, um, kind of along the lines of that, um, you know, what was it like filming at Film Wars? Like, and, you know, this is, um, you know, like locations are very important. So um, what, mm. what was that kind of like, uh, you know, working with this location? It was, it was amazing. Like it was, it was like, it was like the perfect location. It was like, it, it had everything that I needed really for the location and it had its own um like it's a very like i don't you know like there's a there's you walk in and you can just feel the despair of like you know thousands and thousands of drinks being drunk there and like just the loneliness in that space you know <laughs> when you walk in right right happening yeah but um but it shot like a dream and we were really lucky we were really lucky to have the space and you know the owner of the space Howard Adams was really good to me and you know I had walked in uh like a few years before when I was still trying to develop the story and I'd asked him if I could take some photos and he was really he was really generous you know so it was it was it was nice it was good it was like a great place to shoot and it was very self-contained and we were there after they closed and until the morning so we weren't interrupted and yeah um okay uh we've got we've got more questions coming in so um so eponine do you want to do more more work in tv and film or are you interested to just stick to theater um 
to be honest, I think I'm interested in any opportunity that I get. But yeah, I am curious, you know, to kind of be more in, in TV and film because that, that experience was such a great experience for me. And yeah, I'm, I'm open to any opportunity that I can get. <laughs> great. Um, uh, there's another question. I'm not sure. It's well, it's 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 one of those ones that's a little bit more of a comment, but they just said they just finished watching the film, um, uh, so they I think they missed uh, a lot of the Q and A uh, before, but they're just saying congratulations on a beautiful film and wonderful oh, achievement. Thank um, you. I guess. Uh, oh, there was a question. Uh, I mean, it, it's a little bit uh, not phrased as a question, but. Uh, <laughs> um, it's about Eponine being exposed to the parents uh, fighting. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess, and maybe this is a broader thing when when you're working with young actors. Um, how do you and and also we we've talked about this before, Gloria too, um, in, in working with Tina as well. Like, how do you provide like a safe environment for your actors um, mm -hmm. to you know these are scenes that are very emotionally charged, can be triggering. So how do you approach these, these scenes with care? Mm -hmm. Well, with Eponine, um, she was never exposed to it. That was just, we edited it together. So she never actually saw anything or heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until she saw the film, which her parents let her do. <laughs> and now she's 13. <laughs> Um, so definitely, definitely, yeah, that. <laughs> and then, um, I, you know, you just, I mean, I sent out the whole script right from the very beginning um, of the auditions to every actor. And I meant every actor got the entire script because I, I just knew that, you know, like I just wanted them to know what kind of a film it was, you know, um, and I just wanted them to know what they were um, getting into, um, and then, and then just going over, you know, the themes and going over the character and going over the, um, you know, I talked a lot about my own history with violence. Um, I thought that that was important to really put on the table and just let them know that that was, you know, something that I had experienced as well. And so that, um, I definitely, definitely uh didn't want the actors to feel exposed you know and then and then you you just you go through every single thing before you shoot um and you talk about what you know what's going to happen um and when you when you see the film there's not a lot of uh i, I don't like it i'm really for me it was important that it not be graphic that we were in this world but it shouldn't be shot in a way that's graphic um and so, you know, that, that was also discussed with Tina as well. Uh, and, and that was, uh, and why, why was it that you didn't want it to be graphic? What was because I, I just, to me, that's like you, if you, if you do that, then it's gratuitous and then you're exploiting your actors and you're exploiting women. I think you're exploiting these situations. I don't think it's nice, you know, like maybe other filmmakers think it's acceptable, but to me it was that's not acceptable. I, I just, I don't want ever for that like actor to feel like they have to show more flesh than they are comfortable doing because of a role, you know, like mm -hmm. all of the women in the, uh, in the strip club chose their own costumes, um, like, and I, completely without consulting me it was like their choice right and then they would be like this is what I've chosen I'd be like great <laughs> I'm glad as long as you're comfortable right so um I just thought that that was I don't know I just think that's important so okay. yeah um okay we have another question it says uh well it says congratulations on the film Gloria um I was wondering if you could speak to the backstory behind the characters oh sorry backstory of migration uh, behind the characters, uh, like the immigration piece, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, mean, I guess, kind of Deborah's uh, backstory. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I mean, to me, okay. Well, I mean, in terms of Deborah's, okay, I'll tell you the inspiration behind Deborah's backstory, which was that um, when I was a kid, um, my father he worked in the states for a bit, 
and he went down and he was working in New York state and um, he found a place, a place to board with this Korean woman who was a single mom with her daughter who had, um, you know, come from Korea. And uh, my mother was saying something about like, I w- and I was about 11 or 12, uh, saying something about, you know, this woman saying that he could stay without paying any rent and I thought well that's a good thing isn't it mom and she was like it is not a good thing and we are going down there (laughs) and so we went down and we met her and her daughter and you know I had like really no clue exactly what was going on but there was some sort of thing she was I don't know she I I don't know exactly what happened some partner who was in the army who abandoned her and now she's here in the U.S. And I, I put it together when I was older, but when I was younger, I just knew it had something to do with sex or sex, sex somehow had something to do with the story. And I put it together when I was older and I was like, oh, she was looking for a new protector. And my dad was supposed to be that new protector. Mm. <laughs> and so that was where that came from. And so that was originally what was supposed to be Deborah's backstory. Um, but uh, when Tina came in, Tina John, who plays Deborah, and Tina is, her, her Korean is perfect, but her English is also perfect. And I thought, well, shit, you know, like she just played her in a way that I wasn't expecting her to play, be played. Like she really had this, like, like, because Tina's got this really interesting balance of like um, vulnerability, but also like a fierceness about her that I was like whoa like this woman just this actress blew me out of the water and so I rewrote it to reflect um someone who had come over as a child instead so like Mm -hmm. in the story she you know was more of a child when she came you know and enough to like have the experience of remembering having gone to see a fortune teller and her mother going to see a fortune teller because that's such a like it's such an asian thing right like your parents go and they before you're born they go to you know fortune teller or somebody who is that person who is gonna like get the name and tell you what the right you know and the you know just the astrology and everything and then like even if i mean like my family background is very 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 christian so they would never see a fortune teller but it's still so much part of the dna of of the culture you know um and uh, like just you know knowing other people other asians other koreans you know like that was a story that i had heard from another woman who like the fortune teller had told her when she was little girl that that was going to be her destiny was to find true love and she was gonna it was just such a thing right so I just really needed to incorporate that into the story and so she probably Mm -hmm. would have been six when she came over with her mother so her mother is you know very is still very vulnerable right a vulnerable immigrant woman who lost her husband kind of thing husband passed so yeah And, and and you also definitely have like the um the iconic like immigrant Niagara Falls shot in the film too, right? So, <laughs> yes. Like when I immigrated here, that's I got that shot too. So yeah, um. yeah. that was so awesome, right? And that's actually uh, Tina and her, her her mom. Like her mother, her parents were actors, right? So oh okay, yeah. So Tina, I got permission and allowed us to use that photo which I thought was really sweet. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Well, you know, um, we have. It's flown by, um, and I did want to wrap up. And you know, it's always kind of like uh, the question I hate to ask because it's like you've accomplished this, you know, amazing, amazing accomplishment. But um, you know, like what's what's next for both of you, Eponine and, and Gloria? Well, Eps, why don't you tell us? Um, right now, I mean, I, I know I have a workshop with YPT coming up, kind of soonish. Um, but other than that, I'm, I guess I'm just like focusing on school and. Um, stuff like that for now. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm directing a couple of episodes of Coroner, um, which I'm super excited and thrilled about. And um, I'm developing a few features. One of them is The Banquet. I'm developing, developing it with um, Hawkeye Pictures, um, which I'm really thrilled about. Um, Sonia DiRienzo, who is the executive producer, one of the executive producers, along with Carol Whiteman at the Women in Directors Chair. But but the banquet is with just with Hawkeye and um, and Austin Wong, who's going to be producer on it. 
Um, so that's, I'm really excited about that. And then I have a few other feature projects that I'm also really excited about and uh, like a TV series thriller project idea uh, that we just got some development funding, my writing partner, Samora Smallwood and I, um, and that's from her idea, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're gonna be looking forward to a lot more, so. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> just wanted to just wanted to thank you, Gloria and Eponine for joining us. Um, wanted to thank Matt Tell from Toronto Sign Language Interpreter Service. Um, thank you. Uh, thank wanted you. to thank our producers, Mimi Vong and Josephine Cruz for setting up the Zoom windows and everything <laughs> like that. And um, just reminding people that you can still uh, get tickets tonight uh, until midnight. Uh, and you can watch the film until Monday, November 12th, uh, October 12th. And, and then also Re Relation uh, begins November uh, 12th and runs to November 19th. And tickets go on sale October 15th uh, this week. So uh, we hope to see you all in November and please follow the film. Um, oh, where, where uh, yeah, follow the film, follow Gloria, uh, follow Eponine um, and uh, tell your friends to watch the film too, so. Uh, I just want to thank you all. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs>